In early 2017, northern Kenya was in the grip of one of the worst droughts in recent times. The ground had turned to dust, and even in the protected reserves, animals were finding it increasingly difficult to get enough to eat. In the search for food, local herders and their livestock began to encroach into these protected areas, putting further pressure on the struggling wildlife and leading to serious conflicts between neighbouring tribes over what little grass remained. The drought in early 2017 was particularly bad. Not really because there was less rain than ever before, but because so much of the pasture of the Samburu has been damaged by overuse, by overstocking, overgrazing. There's now nowhere to go for the grass and the drought put a cap on it. Every dry season is, in a sense, a mini drought. Some are much worse than others. So when it really gets bad, then all the grass goes, and uh, animals have to start eating things other than grass, or they have to go to desperate lengths to get the grass. And eventually, if they can't, then they start dying. That's already started happening, and if the drought goes on, we're going to go from a state of high anxiety into acute distress for man and beast alike. Normally, the national reserves or national parks are areas set aside for wildlife. These are very small areas compared to outside where everyone is supposed to roam. But because conditions are so bad and everyone is very desperate, this is why you, you find you know, livestock coming into the park. Um, rangers are doing what they can to sort of push them out of the park. But you know, these rangers come uh, from the same communities. By now, uh, most of the rangeland available for the livestock is gone. So in desperation, and uh, with a lot of uh, determination, the herders invaded the parks. They invaded parks, they invaded pro private property, they invaded other people's territory, other pastoralists of different ethnic groups. So it was a pretty hot time in northern Kenya. People are looking for small areas where there's grass, and it doesn't matter whether it's a national park, a national reserve, a different territory that, uh, that you're used to. And this is what is bringing all this trouble. We have so many livestock, so many, like nowhere, you know, this land can hold anymore, or, you know, it's way beyond the current capacity. As we're experiencing unusual pattern of rains, December failed, you know, December short season rain failed. And we thought, okay, maybe March, April will be much better. We really had a lot of expectation of the rain. And again, it was not much patchy rains here and there and as soon as the grass was up uh, you know we got again livestock invasion into the park and just finished up everything. We're not sure what will happen both to livestock and, and, and wildlife because everything that came up was eaten up. So many livestock dying, so many wildlife dying, because there's just nothing to be eaten. Uh, and because everything is going to be so weak, uh, and you know, there will be a lot of uh, sort of intermingling between wildlife and, and, and livestock, um, diseases will be also be very common. And you would find things like anthrax uh, raising up, you know, the numbers of animals getting anthrax, because now their body condition is so deteriorated. Elephants are greatly affected by drought, not so much as some other mammals, but they're very adaptable as well. So elephants need to drink, especially the babies. They need to drink pretty much every day. 
the adults can go for two days without water. They dig for water. They actually are the water makers for the other animals. So many other animals can use an elephant's hoe. You know, the reason why we think the baby elephants will be the most affected uh, in such drought is because they can't keep up with the family. The family has to move from one point to another to look for water, to look for food. They have to go through rough terrain. Maybe that's where the food is. And these babies can't keep up. Um, and they end up either left behind or, or they get weak and the, the lions take the advantage. So all, all I can say is that, you know, the baby elephants will be the most affected because of, you know, the tough situation they will be facing. We are experiencing now really, really difficult times. And we have to realize that it's about time for people to think other uh, source or alternative source of livelihood. The old way of life is unsustainable. There has to be a modernization in animal husbandry. And there can be, but it's a matter of sharing awareness with very traditional people, uh, uh, helping to open minds and getting some of the best people in the world to advise on how to feed livestock through droughts. It's something that isn't done. And there's a huge other thing that's a potential benefit which is the wildlife. And certainly many people in Northern Kenya have already benefited from the wildlife option. They've had lodges and the lodges have been successful, brought big incomes to the communities that didn't have that sort of income before. It's about time uh, for, you know, for this country, uh, for this county, for many people to realize that things have changed and we really have to change and move with the time. The world's changing climate means that the rains here are becoming more unpredictable and unreliable, a problem that's only likely to get worse in the coming years. You know, the pattern just became very clear that, you know, we're not having any more normal seasons. We're receiving either less rain or we are getting these flash floods. Usually, uh, at this time of the year, the river is so high and uh, we're sitting on the bank where normally this would be wet and we, we may not be sitting here. So I am very worried. As long as overgrazing continues, each drought will have a greater and greater impact than the previous one. And this will definitely lead into more conflict between you know, different species and different tribal uh, people. Hopefully we get some rain so that you know, everyone goes back and leaves the park for the wildlife. Samburu women performed rainmaking rituals along the dry bed where the Owasso Nira River once flowed, praying for the rains to return. It seemed the gods may have been listening. dramatic transformation was about to take place. The sudden deluge of rain that had fallen to the west of the reserve rushed into the Owasso riverbed once more, creating an unstoppable wave that swept over the cracked earth. Within minutes, the parched ground had become a raging torrent. The 
As the river filled and the water soaked into the dry earth, new life sprung up from the ground. The herders began moving their livestock off the reserve and back onto the community lands, providing a temporary reprieve for the wildlife until the hard times inevitably return. Beyond the short-term threat of poaching, climate change and human expansion are going to be the greatest challenge to wildlife in the 21st century. Guided by science, organisations like Save the Elephants and their partners are working with communities to forge a harmonious future where people and wildlife can live together in peace.